Who else will return to the WWE? That is the burning question right now as we are just mere weeks into the Triple H era of Raw and SmackDown. Already we have seen the returns of Dakota Kai, Karrion Cross, and Scarlett, and Dexter Loomis, and if the rumors are true, it doesn't look like Triple H will be slowing down anytime soon. The better part of a long list of wrestlers who Triple H signed to WWE during the black and gold era of NXT are no longer with the company, many of those talents are now a part of AEW, with contracts that don't look like they'll be expiring anytime soon. However, when you look at the free agent pool in wrestling right now, there still are some really good names that were released from WWE in the last two years, and Triple H could be eyeing to bring some of them back to the company. I'm already excited about who has returned thus far, but just imagine who would be coming next. Two of the biggest names are of course Johnny Gargano and Candice LeRae. Both exited WWE at the end of 2021 and early this year, but haven't signed or wrestled elsewhere ever since. This goes without saying, but both talents, especially Johnny Gargano, are Triple H guys. Johnny Gargano was the heart and soul of NXT Black and Gold for several years. He won every championship available to him in NXT, match of the year candidates, incredible moment after moment, all under the umbrella of Triple H. This is obviously just me speculating for pure fun here, but I honestly have no doubt in my mind that Johnny Gargano and Candice LeRae will be back in WWE sooner rather than later. Candice would be a huge addition to the women's division that desperately needs it. It's of course gotten better already ever since Bayley returned with Dakota Kai and Io Sky by our side, but still, there is work to be done. And since they're bringing back the women's tag team titles, calling up Indy Hartwell to the main roster and pairing her with Candice, reuniting at least the women of the way, would be a perfect and much needed tag team for that division. And even outside of that, Candice in singles matches versus Bayley, Sasha Banks, who I believe will be on her way back as well, Liv Morgan, Io Sky of course, and more would all be very entertaining matchups to see. And for Johnny Gargano, a man who accomplished everything there was in NXT now comes in with a clean slate. I always thought Johnny Gargano holding the Intercontinental Championship one day just felt right. And of course, one day they could reunite him with Ciampa and add DIY to a much struggling tag team division. I wouldn't do that anytime soon that I believe Ciampa being pushed as a massive heel and Gargano being pushed as a babyface in my eyes would be the best move. I know a lot of people got sick of their rivalry in NXT, so I probably would keep them on separate shows for the time being as well. But regardless, the Gargano family back in a Triple H-led WWE just feels right. Before I get into some of the other big names that could be on their way back to WWE, I'm just going to spitball some talent here that as far as I know aren't signed elsewhere, at least exclusively, and if available, I personally would bring them back for one reason or another. In regards to the tag team division that desperately needs some new teams to spice things up, I think you can honestly grab Tucker Knight and reunite Heavy Machinery. Yes, Otis is in Alpha Academy right now, but let's be honest, I think it's time Chad Gable finally goes on his own in his career. Heavy Machinery was a great tag team back in NXT. They should have never broken up in the first place, but you know, Vince McMahon booking. I think Wesley on his own in NXT is cool and all, but he is most definitely going to be more successful in WWE if he has his tag team partner by his side. So I'd bring back Nash Carter and bring in MSK to the main roster. You want a fun, fresh tag team for Raw and SmackDown? Look no further. These next guys may be a bit of a long shot, but dude, if they were down and could still do all of their outside endeavors with the Major Wrestling Figure Podcast, bring back the freaking Major Brothers, man. Matt Cardona and Brian Myers, in my opinion, have been shining stars since getting released two years ago, completely refreshing themselves and gaining more popularity than ever in the ring and outside of it with their podcast. I would absolutely love to see Cardona and Myers or Ryder and Hawkins back in WWE as a legit tag team and even in singles fashions as well. But the major bros, major players, whatever you want to call them, back in WWE, I can tell you right now, you would have an entire wrestling figure community pumped up about their return. And in association with them, if she was available, bring back Chelsea Green too. And yes, I know all three of them wrestle for Impact, but they also wrestle in the indies and whatnot. I really don't know how exclusive those impact contracts are, that's why I'm just saying if they're available. But yes, Chelsea Green too, to have a proper run in the women's division this time around, would be great. There's honestly several more impact talents I can name, but again, I don't know how their contracts really work, so I'm not going to go any further into their roster. But, good brothers, Deanna Perrazzo, Heath, Jordan Grace, Josh Alexander, Jonah, Moose, you guys get the point. Hey, a man can dream, right? 
Some other random names go like this. Tyler Breeze, he was an NXT black and gold guy who at least got to be active the last few years of his WWE career in NXT. He's still in association with Up Up Down Down, of course, which is also in association with WWE. And let's be honest, I don't see Breeze wrestling anywhere else. So if he's going to be in a ring, it should be in a WWE under Triple H. I'd re-sign the Singh brothers, who I believe were Triple H hires as well after the Cruiserweight Classic. Maybe realign them with Jinder Mahal, just because. And there's another tag team, so a plus. John Morrison's last run in WWE was a joke. They immediately paired him with The Miz because Vince McMahon and company were too uncreative to do anything else. He basically did nothing for the better part of two years before he was cut again. Morrison has proved in Impact and Lucha Underground that he could be a top star, or at the very least, that upper mid-card guy who can compete for the Intercontinental or United States title and just put on killer matches with literally anybody. Sign him up! One person who I think will definitely come back soon enough is Tegan Knox, another NXT black and gold era woman, cut for honestly no good reason. She's young, extremely talented, and should be back on TV in that women's division as soon as yesterday. If possible, there's also some legends I'd love to see back in the WWE family. Some new actually wrestle, some to honestly just be under legends contracts so we can get some action figures made of them. But some of those names can still go, such as Carlito for one. Dude showed up in the 2021 Royal Rumble looking better than he did in 2006, still an active wrestler and should 100% already been signed back to the WWE, but they didn't sign him for whatever reason. Chris Masters is another one, dude is only 39 years old, same thing as Carlito when it comes to being in fantastic shape, as the masterpiece always was of course. Still active as well and has been for several years in NWA, Impact, and Independence. So why not? He's a great talent and hell, you could reunite him and Carlito as a tag team if you really wanted to. Rob Van Dam, recent Hall of Fame inductee in WWE 2K22, DLC, and yes, he is 51 years old. Is he super active in the ring? No, but looks like all those years of stretching martial arts and well, other green medicines have certainly paid off. RVD at 51 still moves like RVD at 41, 31, you get the point. He was just in Pro Wrestling Noah a few months ago, tearing down the house. If he can still go every now and then, why not have him tangle with some of the young stars in WWE that he can teach a thing or two to, and give them a rub in the process. Other names I'd love to see under some sort of Legends deal in WWE simply for the action figures and inclusion in the 2K games alone, Chavo Guerrero, Hornswoggle, yes I said Hornswoggle, and Bubba Ray Dudley. Isn't Devon a producer backstage in WWE? Yeah, give me some new Dudley Boys figures and put them in 2K23. Please and thank you. Alright, let's get into the obvious big one. Bray Wyatt. Bray Wyatt is and has been the top free agent in wrestling for a while. And let's be honest, Bray Wyatt is just a WWE guy. His entire career has been in WWE. One of the most interesting and creative wrestlers of the last decade alone was casted away by WWE because the old regime was just full of control freaks and uncreative, no talent hacks. And not for nothing, but Bray Wyatt, yeah, he is an OG NXT black and gold guy. The Wyatt family was born in the early days of Full Sail NXT. So if you think that now that Triple H holds the power that he isn't going to do anything in his power to bring Bray back to the WWE, you're crazy. I don't know what Bray has been thinking from the outside looking in. If he really wanted to join AEW, he probably would have done it already. Bray Wyatt with the freedom to do whatever the hell he wants creatively is going to be a sight to see when and if he returns to WWE. It's a must. Bray Wyatt was and is too damn good in every which way to not be wrestling right now. He is the biggest get WWE could receive. And if you want to add fuel to the fire, you bring back Eric Rowan and Braun Strowman as well. Now I got sick and tired honestly of Braun by the end of his WWE run anyway, but you give me Braun by Bray Wyatt's side in the Wyatt family, I'll be all in. Hell, Rowan was always underrated in WWE as a singles guy. I'm not saying he's freaking the late great Luke Harper out there, but he could still hang. Hell, he proved that in his one-off appearance in AEW this year. Plus, Braun and Rowan, another tag team to add to a division that desperately needs it. Bray Wyatt is the biggest get alone by himself, but if you get Braun Strowman and Eric Rowan along with him, that's even cooler. There is so much potential there with Bray and the Wyatt family and under a creatively led WWE under Triple H. Just imagine the stories in utter chaos for the good they could create. That's a list of names I came up with that I'd love to see back in WWE. Now, I obviously didn't include any names from AEW because at this current point in time, that would just be unrealistic. 
There's plenty of names in AEW that I think Triple H would have a ball with, and I'm sure he has his eyes on, past NXT stars or not. But those names probably aren't going anywhere anytime soon, so I'm not going to bother running down that list. And maybe some of those names on my list are a bit fantasy, but still very realistic for some. There's a lot of free agent talent that I'm sure Triple H is looking at, including independent talent that we might not even know yet. Regardless of who shows up, whenever they do, this all ties back to my video the other day where I can just state again that I'm just super excited for the future of WWE. I'm pumped up for when we get past Clash at the Castle, get a fresh draft, new rosters for Raw and SmackDown, and hopefully just an overall completely fresh feel and atmosphere for both shows. Let me know down below who you would like to see return to the WWE, realistic or fantasy. Comment your list on who you would think would be a good fit for Raw and SmackDown. Thank you guys for giving this video a listen. More wrestling discussions to come. I'm extremely excited for the future of the Noah Nation YouTube channel, and I hope you guys will join me along for that ride. Be sure to support by hitting that like button and subscribing down below, and you can become a channel member as well, receive a couple of exclusive perks by hitting the join button as well. Thanks again, Nation. I'll talk to you guys soon. Peace.